I'm glad I came this morning. Are you? I just love these front few rows here. We are so blessed and thank you for your ministry to us today, guys. And thank you, Amelia, for reading that passage with all those funny names and we appreciate it. So we're up to week five of our Acts series and I've really enjoyed Acts and looking again at the church and the early church until this week. No, I have enjoyed this week. Trolling through four chapters and trying to work out what on earth we would talk about this morning. I think God's been saying quite a bit to us as a church in Shire Salvos in 2024 through looking at the first church. Last week, Mark talked about breakthrough miracle power. We saw the miracle of Saul's conversion and we were challenged that that same miracle power is available to us. Very exciting. It was a great morning. We can experience a Holy Spirit miracle breakthrough power. Over these next few chapters that we're looking at this morning, we see the church is being established and it's growing. So I think it was mentioned, four chapters, 11 to 14, we're sort of looking at this morning. And there's so much in these chapters. And I'd encourage you to go home this week, if you haven't read them in the lead up, and read Acts 11 to 14. Some exciting things happening. So much happening. The establishment of the church in Antioch, Peter's escape from prison, and Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas's first missionary journey. There's so much we could take from these chapters, but like all preachers, we're going to focus on three things this morning. Firstly, the importance of the established church. The importance of establishing the church. Secondly, we're going to look at the opposition and the challenges that we face. And finally, we're going to look at the sending church. So that's where we're going this morning. Both the establishing and the sending are important. And I've probably taken more notice than you would because I knew what I was going to say this morning. But a lot of our songs and things that were shared have sort of reinforced to me the importance of the established church and the importance of the sending church. Both are important. The church is established so it can grow. The church is established so that we can send people out into the world to be a light in this dark world. This has been happening from Acts until today. The church is established so we can grow, but not so we can get big, sit back, enjoy our worshipping and teaching and our fellowship with each other. The church is established so that we can grow and go out as light into this dark world. We are a sent people. It is the breakthrough miracle moments, like Saul's conversion. And I was trying to think of some breakthrough miracle moments in my time. I thought, I thought about the Billy Graham crusades, you know, where you took along friends and thousands of people came to know Jesus. I thought of um, the Toronto Blessing and other times of revival where, you know, there were some amazing breakthrough miracle moments. But it's also the thousands of other, thousands, millions of other smaller miracle moments, I'm calling them. I don't know if you'd call them that. But the stuff that happens in the everyday, when we, you and I as God's people, go out into the world and just share Jesus with people. And I thought of so many stories, but I could be up here today telling you lots of stories. We'll leave that for now. So firstly, we're going to look at the church established. And this was read by Amelia, 11, 19 to 26. So previously in the lead up to these chapters, Stephen is killed for his faith. 
And the amazing thing is it doesn't stop the church from growing. In fact, it does the opposite. I love this. I love, uh, you know, the king would have thought we're going to kill Stephen and that's going to silence these people. But it did the opposite. So the people scattered, the early believers, they scattered into other communities. And where they went, they took the message of Jesus. And so what the king thought to squash, God used and spread the message further. I loved church history when I did my study. I was one of those weird people. It was my favourite subject. I think I came first in church history every time. <laughs> A weirdo. But when you look at um, the history of the church, this happens. You know, when the church was under the greatest persecution, they experienced their greatest growth. And I was thinking how, you know, people think they can squash the word of God, but the word of God is so powerful. It can't be squashed. It's interesting that the king thought by killing Stephen, he was silencing the message of Jesus. But the message of Jesus cannot be silenced. The believers scattered, and where they went, they took the message of Jesus. I love that. Mostly the Bible tells us they would go to new cities and they'd head straight to the Jewish community and they'd share about Jesus and the resurrection uh, with the Jewish community. But in, in this uh, passage, something exciting happens, something different happens. These two brave followers, the Bible doesn't even give us their names, but these two brave followers from Cyprus and Cyrene when they went to Antioch, they went to the Hellenistic community. They went and shared the message of Jesus with the Greek people. And many of them were saved. The church was growing. Another breakthrough, miracle moment. And as we read this morning, um, the church in Jerusalem, I don't know how word spread then. They didn't have social media or I don't know how it did but it spread. And back in Jerusalem, they hear of what's happening in Antioch and they're amazed. And so Barnabas comes out to have a look. I think it was too good to be true. So we'll send Barnabas to have a look. And then he says, Paul has got to see this. So they go and they bring Paul. And the two of them stayed in Antioch for 12 months, establishing a church. So we have Jews and Greeks together in the church being discipled by Paul and Barnabas. It's a beautiful thing. The first ethnically diverse church being established. And it's here that I think we see the power of the established church. So these two amazing leaders stayed in Antioch for 12 months at such a crucial time in the development of the church. So this is very early on. And so for 12 months, they stayed in the one place. Now, I think the temptation could have been to keep going. Let's go broader. Let's keep taking this message further afield. But they knew that it was important for the new Christians to be built up and strengthened in their faith. The church needs to be wide and deep. We need to grow up. We need to mature. We need to be discipled and we need to disciple others. So they saw the importance, Paul and Barnabas saw the importance of the established church, of the believers being discipled and growing. Both are important, the establishing and the sending it's an interesting aside, you would have heard it when Amelia read it, at, read it this morning, that this is where the term was first used of Christian in the church in Antioch. So when you and I say we are Christians, it goes back to these days in Antioch. So the story of Jesus has leapt from the Jewish community to the Greek community. So we've seen this leap of faith, the power of the established church. Great things are happening in Antioch. And meanwhile, back in Jerusalem, the challenges are being faced. They're facing incredible challenge. 
James has been killed for his faith and Peter has been imprisoned. And we're going to continue to see, and I think next week, Acts, we're going to look again at um, some persecution and opposition to the church. We're going to keep seeing persecution and opposition to the church. In fact, throughout the church history, we've seen this. And it's hard for us to imagine this, sitting here in our comfortable church, feeling quite safe. But even today in the world, there are many Christians being killed for their faith. There will be opposition. The message of Jesus has such power and the kingdom of darkness will do all it can to stop the message of Jesus. Now in Australia, we may not, at this point in our history, be put to death for our faith, but we will receive opposition. Now we had a little example of this on Thursday night at Soul Food. And I say it's small when you read of people being martyred for their faith. But someone from another agency came along and was quite outspoken and anti about what's happening at Soul Food on a Thursday night. So we will experience opposition. The amazing thing that was mentioned before was that King thought that by silencing Christians, by killing them, by putting Peter in jail and chaining him between two guards, that they were going to stop the message of Jesus going out. The king thinks he has the upper hand, but we know that God has the ultimate authority. They chained Peter between two guards to silence him. And if you read later on, in Acts 13 or Acts 12, an angel appears and frees Peter from his chains. Doors miraculously open and out walks Peter and he heads to um, the place where the believers are praying for his release and they don't open the door for a while (laughs) because they can't believe God's answered that prayer and he's standing right in front of them. And the challenge in this story is... You don't always get the miraculous rescue. When we read on about the life of Peter, we know that Peter gives his life ultimately for the gospel. We read that Stephen and in this passage James and many others have given their lives for the gospel. And that's where we can have a bit of a um, conundrum. So the challenge is we don't always get the miraculous rescue. Not every single time will the prison doors open. But every time the plan is for God's power to be displayed. We can believe that God answers prayer and no matter what the challenges we face, we keep sharing the message of Jesus. Even when the challenges come, whatever the outcome. And I think we see this in Acts amazingly. Whatever happened, they kept going, sharing the message of Jesus. So then finally we get to the sending church. So we go back to Antioch where the new church has been established. And we're reminded in Acts 13, 1 to 3, that the church is always a sending church. Paul and Barnabas have been with them for 12 months And they've discipled and built up the believers there. And maybe they wanted to stay. I don't know. But we read in Acts 13 that the Holy Spirit came to the leaders and said to them, it's time. (laughs) Send out Paul and Barnabas to share the gospel wider. We are a sent people. I remember having a conversation with the officers of I would say, the largest corps in the Salvation Army at the time. And it was one of those challenging conversations where I had to ask them to release a couple for ministry. And I was really, I was really quite sad when they said to me, and these were their words, we've sent too many. I was shattered and I was a bit disappointed because we do need to be ascending church. There was a good outcome. We talked it round and eventually 
these people were, were released and are doing an incredible ministry in another community. But we always need to be a sending church. So from Antioch, the first missionary journey commences. And I've got a slide. I don't know if you're interested in maps, but you might be interested in this map. So this is virtually um, these chapters of the Bible. You probably can't see it. But the blue line is where they headed out into all these communities sharing the message of Jesus. Lasted for two years and they travelled quite a distance. They were able to send because of the power of staying and establishing the church, of discipling the new believers. Once again, the, esta the established church is not so that we can go, we can grow and stay and remain where we are. It's about strengthening the believers so that we can be sent. Another frustrating conversation both of us had, David and I, very early on in our, I think it was our first appointment, we had a conversation with a couple who were probably, they were the longest standing members of this congregation. And they would come, come in late, they'd leave early, they'd sit with their arms folded and whenever we visited them, <laughs> they'd say, you, you won't know these people, so it's okay for me to share these stories. <laughs> Whenever we'd visited, visit them, they'd say, no one speaks to us. And I remember us trying to take these lovely people, and they were lovely people, on a journey of saying to them, well, maybe it's not about you getting all your needs met. You know, maybe you could go and talk to someone. Maybe you could go out into your community and talk about Jesus. I don't think we ever got anywhere with them. Um, they never seemed to get it. I was watching a Kerry Newolf clip this week and it was quite challenging because it was saying that many, he was saying that many pastors and church members cannot fulfill their mission of being sent people because they are at their church seven days a week enjoying their friends. Friends, we need to be a sent people. Yes, we need to release people to go to other com communities. I think of just a few months ago, we said goodbye to Gabe and Bree, and we sent them off overseas to be a light for Jesus over there. But we need, for those of us that may be uncalled to go to another community, we too need to be sent people. We need to go out into our community and share the message of Jesus and his resurrection. So I think the question for us, Shire Salvos in 2024, is, are we established to be sent? Are we more focused on getting for ourselves good teaching, good worship, maybe singing our favourite songs, seeing our favourite people, connecting with each other? Or are we the established church about being strengthened so that we can go out, so that we can be a sent people into our communities and share the love of Jesus? I think it's pretty clear in the scripture today what we need to be. The church is established to be sent. There will always be opposition. There was opposition to the early church. Throughout all church history, there's been opposition. I think we need to remember it's not a opposition to us personally. It's opposition to the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual battle. So we grow in the church, that's important. We grow, we go deep, but we grow so that we can love people and go out with the message of Jesus. Whatever opposition we receive, we must not stop telling people of Jesus. I wonder if God is challenging you as he has me 
that the church, that's you and I, have been perhaps too more or too much about the staying and not as much about the sending. And I need to be part of the sending. Or maybe you've gone out and you've tried to share the message of Jesus and it's been too hard. And you're wanting to quit or you have quit and uh, just happy to sit and feel safe in the church. God could be challenging you, as he has me, in these last few weeks to stand up in the power of the Holy Spirit, that miracle power that we talked about last week, and keep going. God has given us the strength, as he did the early followers, to keep going. We have the power of the Holy Spirit and his strength to keep going. This message really is too important to be stopped. So I think that could be the challenge that God is giving to us this morning from these passages. Or maybe it's something else. But whatever God is challenging you about, can I encourage you to respond um, with a yes? God will never leave us stranded. He'll be with us and he will help us. So we're going to have a time of reflection and the worship team are going to help us and we're going to sing. And if you'd like to respond to what God is saying to you, we would always open that opportunity by prayer here. If you'd like one of your leaders or a friend to pray with you, please uh, go and speak to them or just where you are. Let's respond to what God is saying. The church is established to be sent. And I just pray that God would help us to be responsive to what he's saying to us today.